This is just going to be a very basic introduction video to Adobe Photoshop. This is Adobe Photoshop CS6 and I've more or less opened it up for the first time. Uh, this should be what you would see if you're opening it up for the first time. And this video is intended for somebody who is just using this for the first or second time. Just a little bit of the user interface to begin with. It's pretty complicated at a glance if you're not used to it. Over here on the left hand side we have tools. And then up at the top, we have the basic file menu uh, that most programs have. And then down below that, there's options for whatever tool that I have selected. So you can see as I go down the list of tools, the options that are underneath the main menu changes each time I choose a new tool. Off to the right, uh, we've got a history and then some actions. That sort of keeping track of what you've done allows you to reduce, to undo stuff that you've done if you didn't like it. Uh, I've also got other palettes. These are called palettes. Uh, the main one you want to be concerned with is the layers palette. And I'll actually go ahead and close down these. They're still there. If you wanted one, you can just click on it and it'll fly back out. I'm just going to get rid of them for the moment. And now we're going to go ahead and open up a JPEG image. So we're going to click on file and then open. That brings up our file browser and we can browse out to get an image. I'm going to go ahead and get one of these test images. And I want this one right here. Double click it and now it's opened up in Photoshop. So you'll see that now in the layers palette I have a layer called background and that's the image that we just opened up. So what we're going to do is maybe do some changes over here to Wally's Urban Oasis and I'm going to go ahead and click the zoom tool or you can press Z and we'll zoom in a couple of times. Once you zoom in on something and it fills the screen or is bigger than the screen, if you click the space bar, you get a hand. And now if I click and hold, I can move around the image if I'm zoomed in a lot. So what we want to do here, I was thinking maybe we'll just get rid of Wally's Urban and we'll just have the sign say Oasis. First thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer. Anytime I'm working on an image and I'm going to do something to it, I always make a copy of it first as a, a layer copy and then that way I still have the original if I mess up the one that I'm working on. To do that I'm just going to press Control and J at the same time. I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac that's Command J I believe and now you see I have a second layer. So some basics about the layers is they have this eyeball next to them and if I unclick the eyeball it, it makes that layer invisible. Since it's just a duplicate you can't tell I did anything. If I go ahead and unclick the eyeball on the background layer you'll see now everything's transparent because there's nothing there. So I'm going to go ahead and click those both. And now you can see by clicking on the layer, one of them's highlighted and that's the layer you're going to work on. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the top layer because that's the one I want to work on. And now I just have to figure out how I'm going to get rid of this text and I just want it to look like the rock is still there behind it. Uh, one way to do that is with the clone stamp. This is Photoshop 101. Clone stamp's been around for as long as I've used Photoshop but there are better ways to do this. So all the clone stamp does is you choose a source by clicking Alt and now as you move the mouse around you see this different cursor and wherever you click as you're pressing Alt that is the source that it's going to copy. And you can see the little crosshair is sort of moving in tandem with wherever I move the clone stamp. So if you're going to do something like this, you probably need to be cloning from a few different places so that you don't end up with a pattern that's obvious to tell. You can already see I got a little bit one going there. And you can just sort of work your way through it. That's one way to do it. And notice over here on the right that if I turn off this layer, there's my original image. I still have all of that there if I want it. So there's other ways to do this. Uh, one is to select the area that you want to get rid of and use the Content Aware Fill. So I'll try that. Up here is the, this is the lasso tool. It's a selection tool. With it, if I click and start drawing, you can see that it's drawing a line wherever I move the mouse. Now, this is clicking and holding. And once I get back to where I started and I unclick, now I have these little dotted line, many times referred to as the marching ants in Photoshop. And that's sort of what I have selected. Now, I, what I want to do is tell Photoshop to fill this selection. And I'll go up here to Edit, down to Fill. 
And then it's already selected on Content Aware, but just so you know, there are other options up here. More than likely, you're gonna see foreground color if you haven't done it before. Or there's other a variety of other things, white or black. That's not gonna do me any good. I want it to be the Content Aware, where Photoshop is gonna see what the content is and it's gonna do its best to recreate it. I'm gonna press OK. And voila. Photoshop has done a decent job, not so great. I'll clean up some of that with the clone stamp. And there is still my selection there. If I click anywhere, it'll go away, or I could press Control D and it'll go away. It went away because I still had the selection, the lasso selection tool selected, and it was waiting for me to make another selection. But I don't want to do that. Press Control D, it goes away. I'm going to go get the clone stamp, and I think with a few clicks here and there, I can get rid of this part that's more noticeable. And if I want to change the size of the clone stamp, I can do that up here, but I usually don't do that. I use the bracket keys on the keyboard, so the right bracket key makes the stamp bigger, or the brush, this works for all of the brush tools. So the left one makes it smaller, the right one makes it bigger, and that's the bracket tools on the keyboard. So now I'm just gonna press Alt and choose that as my source and just sort of go up over this, choose all it over here, go over that, and we'll go over that. And this sort of looks like it's from that. It's a little too obvious that I did that. So that's just a really basic thing you can do in Photoshop. I think I did a decent job, probably not the greatest job. Looks a little weird. Uh, but there is what I started with, and that's the new one. So now maybe after we do that, what we want to do is put some text on here. And we'll go ahead and I was thinking we'll put a white background and we'll put some text on top of that. So what I use there is the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool. If you click and hold that, there are other options there, but the marquee, the rectangular marquee tool is the default one. So I drew out a selection. I'm still on layer number one, which is the image. Just to be non-destructive for this image, I'm going to go down here and click on this new layer icon. And now I have a new layer and it's automatically highlighted. That's what I'm working on. Now I want to fill this with just white. So I'll go back up here to edit, fill, and then instead of content aware, I'm going to go down here and click on white. And now I'm going to press control D to get rid of the selection. And now you can see I have a third layer that's just a white bar. Uh, if I double click on this, I can add in some layer styles. Maybe I want to drop shadow, make it look a little more hip. And now I'll click the zoom tool and zoom back in. And it just added a little bit of a shadow. If I go over here on the effects underneath the layer, you can see there's another eyeball and I can turn on and off the layer effect. Press Z to bring back the zoom tool, zoom out. And now I'm going to go to the text tool, which is T. And now you can see up here I can choose a font. We'll just choose Arial. Here's the color. And black is fine, but maybe we want to sample a color out of the picture. So now you can see I can choose a, a color anywhere in here. And then I can use this slider here to change the palette of colors that it's showing me in the box here. Or if I go outside of this window, you can see the cursor change to an eyedropper. And if I click on one of these yellow flowers, now you can see it's changed to that color. I'll press OK to select that. And now I'll go down here and click in my box. And we're going to type in Hello World, of course. And I'll click the check mark to commit the text. And now you see it's a little small. Uh, with the text tool still selected, I'll go up here to the font size and just click and hold. And you can see I can make the font size bigger or smaller. And now I'm going to click the move tool. And now I can move it around. And we'll say we want it right there. So I think that looks pretty good for what we're doing. This little white box is maybe a little too long for what I want. And I'm going to go back over here and select on that layer. You can see the text one on its own new layer. Anytime you use the text tool and you're starting on a new bit of text, it is going to create its own layer, which is good because text is a special kind of layer so that it can still be editable. So I'm going to click on my white box layer. 
So now I'm going to click Control T, which is going to be the transform function. And that put these little anchors around the edges of what was on that layer, which just happened to be this white box. Now I can click and hold and move this in, and it's transforming it by moving it in to the left to make it smaller. I could also grab this and make it bigger. So I got it to where I want it. That looks good. I'm going to press return, and that's just applying the transformation. So that looks pretty good for what we need to do for this, I think. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and save it. So this is an important step. Over here, you can see that there are four layers in this document. If I save this as a JPEG, JPEGs can only have one layer. All of this is going to get compressed into one layer. My text won't be editable. The white box is going to be superimposed on top of the image. I wouldn't be able to change it again. So when you go to save, you have to choose what's the best file type that you want to save it as. It's automatically defaulting to a PSD because I think that's I think that's automatic because it knows that I have multiple layers. So if I save it as a PSD, I can reopen this and it's going to maintain this layer structure and I'll still be able to edit it. If I save it as a JPEG, then it's giving me this little exclamation mark down here next to layers because it's going to flatten it and I will no longer be able to edit the text or change any of the layers that I have in there because they're all going to be compressed into one. So I'll go ahead and save it as a PSD. And it's got the same file name as it was. I'll click Save. Mm, sure. And now if I go out to my file system, you'll notice that I now have a PSD of that same file. If I was okay with it, I thought I was done and I didn't need to edit it, I would go up here to File and Save As, and then choose JPEG. Once you click Save from here, it's going to give you another set of options. Ah, it's asking me if I want to replace that. Let's not do that, and we'll say this is dash B, version B of that file. When you're saving as a JPEG, it'll give you these JPEG options. The imp very important is this slider for quality you should make sure that that's at 10 or above. I usually use 10 as a default, and you can tell it's affecting the file size. Over here, it's giving you a preview that that's gonna end up as a 3.4 megabyte file. If I go to 12, it's gonna change and say it's a little bit bigger. If I was down here at two, it's gonna be a much smaller file and it's gonna be a very low quality. So 10 or above is what I would say you need to keep, keep that at and then baseline standard for the format options. If I click OK, now it's saved as a JPEG.